graphics. I've done the same for the other graphic elements. So now my design is ready, graphics and uh, text. So I want to share this with uh, Frank. I will use Studio to write a PDF file with 3D design. This is a regular normal PDF file that anyone can view with the free Adobe Reader, yet it contains 3D. Let's see what Chris has sent me. It's a PDF, so I'll open it up with Acrobat Reader. And let's have a look. Hey, this is 3D. That's much better than a 2D. I know now what my box will look on the bottom, on the left and right side, on the top. So very easy for me to understand what the final packaging will look like. I can zoom and pan around, check the text, and there's something that needs to be changed. We're actually not talking about 500 grams here. This needs to become 425. Nothing easier than that. I go back to my text sheet. I'll change that entry to what needs to go there, 425. And because Chris is using the dynamic content, I know that any change I do here will be in the packaging design. I get a changed warning as soon as the XML file is overwritten. And so with a simple click, I have updated the text without ever touching it myself. Hey Chris, the design is great, but we did a market research in Germany and that shows that the Germans prefer to buy the food in flexible bags. So can you please make me a proposal on a flexible bag? Okay, to design a bag I will use Studio Toolkit for flexibles. This uh, brand new and unique application I just have to select the right type of uh, flexible packaging and uh, enter a couple of dimensions. And to make it really interesting, I will add a shape that looks like a fist of spaghetti inside this bag. Not using a complicated 3D software, but just supplying with that length and uh, playing a bit with the uh, rounded edges. So here is the shape that Studio Toolkit for Flexibles has generated for me. It's not only a 3D shape, but the, this file also contains uh, 2D technical uh, drawing. So now I can start interacting with the shape. Maybe I want these edges to be a little bit uh, smoother, so I add some bending lines. This looks already a lot better. I do the same on the uh, other side. There is also a puller tool. With this tool I can grab a point on my back and pull it in some direction. Okay, I like this part now, so uh, I'll use the freezer gun to freeze this end of the package so that it won't change anymore while I work on the other side. Maybe I want it overall a little bit smoother, yes, like that. And uh, now my shape is done, so uh, I would like to save it now and bring this into Illustrator. So now I place this structural file in my Illustrator document. And I see the new cat drawing in uh, 2D and of course the flexible shape in my studio window. Let's see how uh, the graphics I made for the box, how they work on the back. 
that's not too bad on the front side, but um, it obviously doesn't really work on the back side because it's a different structure. So let's use the navigation tools from Studio once more to uh, zoom into these areas and uh, adapt the design for the new flexible structure. Let's see how that looks in 3D. Now that's already uh, a lot better, but um, I probably want these uh, Italian colors to run all the way around, so uh, I'll make a fix for that. And see how it looks in Studio. Yes, this is really what I was uh, looking for. But uh, my text here is still English, and Frank mentioned that the, this was for the German market, so I will need new text content. All my text objects are already dynamic and linked to an English XML file. Now, just by relinking it to a German XML file, my uh, complete design is updated to uh, the German language. To see if all the text still fits, dynamic content can uh, give me a nice overflow warning and bring me to the text boxes where uh, the updated text no longer fits. So in this case, because of the long German words, um, it doesn't fit anymore in the box. As a designer, I now um, decide to change the line spacing. I can change formatting. I cannot change the content. And now my design is ready. It uh, has been transferred to a flexible bag and it has been transferred to the German language. And I once more write a 3D PDF file for Frank. Oh, let's see what I've already received from Chris. I open it up in Acrobat Reader. This is simply amazing. Again, I can have a look at my packaging design in 3D. I can see how the graphics and the shape are interacting. I can very easily compare it with the previous version. Communicating design in 3D simply leaves no room for misinterpretations. Chris, I really need to benchmark this in a retail environment. But please don't tell me I have to wait a week for a physical mock-up. Studio is really nice to show graphics on a shape, but to really see the subtle effects of different substrates, we have to use Visualizer with the same graphics and the same shape and bring this object, at this time, into a real uh, retail environment. Chris, can you show it on a less reflecting uh, substrate and maybe add some eye catchers to it? So let's see how a more glossy substrate would work with um, with these things, and that's uh, indeed a completely different effect. It also brings out that um, silver ink text uh, a lot better. To share all of this with Frank, I have uh, several options. In this case, I will write a couple of QuickTime movies. Oh, well, let's see what I received from Chris here to movies, movies about packaging. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I got the two versions here. And this is amazing. The moment it starts moving, it's really like I'm holding the product in my hand. Chris, thank you very much for this great work. This was surely faster, better and cheaper than ever before.